Hey class, this is uh, uh, Lamar Horton, Specialist Horton of the 156. Um, coming to you live from Jordan. I am a deployed United States soldier. Um, right now, I've been attending the Bible class uh, approximately the whole semester. Um, I enjoyed the class. I enjoyed the content. And um, I took the class to, uh, uh, one, uh, kind of learn about more about God, but also to uh, bolster my GPA. Um, today, I'm going to get into um, Luke 15, dash 1 uh, to 7. And in Luke, 15, in Luke 15, I want people to really recognize, um, you know, it's going to be a bigger message, an overall bigger message. But Luke 15, I want people to recognize uh, the difference between then and now or the similarities between then and now, rather. Uh, my uh, slide or my uh, video is, is called God Loves Us All. Everybody gets a trophy. OK, uh, if we look at slide one uh, and we look at the passage, of course, God is love and holy. Um, if we look at the passage, Luke 15, uh, dash 1 uh, to 7, says, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. So I just want to, for one second, uh, show you kind of what this means to me um it's no secret that we as christians have been uh we have christians have been very um judgmental yeah for lack of a better word i think we've been judgmental in several aspects uh of different communities uh um whether we agree with them or not um we have kind of lost our way in that aspect because we have grown this mentality that we have to be holier than now. As read on uh, slide three, the reality of the problem. You know, Christians have grown accustomed to look down on the unsaved or the unsavory. Why? Why do we have a complex for a holier than now mentality? This was nice maybe when we were getting stoned to death. But to grow the congregation and to grow the faith, we cannot alienate the world with, with judgment. God hates sin, not us as individuals. He hates the devil's confusion, not us. Um, you know, this is something I personally dealt with as well, because I've dealt with the church in a sense of um, probably when I was younger, I had to wear a suit to church. And if I didn't have a suit on, I was just a terrible, terrible kid at the time, you know. I have, <laughs> you know, they want to call CPS on you because you're so terrible. You're so awful because you don't have a suit that day. But, you know, it is what it is. And when we look at Luke 15, um, it's kind of having the same thing. They're, the, you know, the scribes and the people, the Pharisees that are trying to get the word, you know, the guys who legalized, you know, religion almost, the guys who are just participating. It was like this guy, this guy, Jesus, hangs out with tax collectors and sinners like drunks. And, uh, you know, he hangs out with the worst people in the world. And look at slide four. We say and he goes on to say, what man of you having a hundred of sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety nine in the open country and go after the lost, the lost one until he finds it. And he was found, and he and he he found it. He lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. This is what God said unto the the people that were saying what they were saying. You know, and I think that is the beauty of Christ is that we can consistently see uh, times, situations, and um, I want to say time, situations, and occurrences that Christ is going to go after that lost sheep. At least it goes on to say that uh, he will rejoice more for the one sheep that was found than the 99 that he had brought. So 
yeah, I, it's hard for me to call people sheep and they're lost and all that stuff. Uh, third, but we just judged, you know, we just judged uh, Jesus hanging on tax collectors, hanging out with tax collectors and sinners. And Jesus is replying, hey, look, at the end of the day, I, I will leave the nine ninety nine sheep in open country and go after the one that is lost until I find it. And when I find it, I will lay my hands on it and shoulders and I will rejoice and all the heavens will rejoice. Uh, but we have to look at the, the where we led ourselves to look at slide five. You know, look at look. This is hypocrisy by example. I could talk about how we as the saved or how we as the unsaved are, are moving. And, and check this out. There's, there's distinct differences, but there's not a lot of differences. You'll take a typical saved person that an X person is judgmental, blah, blah, blah. Goes to church three times a year <laughs> for Easter, Christmas, and New Year's. He knows God, except God as Savior, but still lives a worldly life. Tithes probably 10% a week, if that, maybe. Just judgmental. Even if they went to church every day and they still retain it, they still not retain it, the core message of church that God saves everyone. God loves everyone. You know, you know, here on the left, you have a person that, you know, is judging um, the people, is judging the situation and just having a holier than thou approach. Now, I'm sure there's, you know, people that go to church every day and do the holier than thou. But let's look at the unsaved. The unsaved is they rely on being a good person. They don't doesn't don't break the law. They pay taxes, live a good life of worldly standards and doesn't follow any religious or spiritual doctrine. Um, we look at that sheep that was lost. It wasn't doing nothing bad. It wasn't out there in the you know commonwealth of parts of the world, like living it up. It wasn't in the casino. It wasn't in none of that. It wasn't doing anything disruptive, but it ran from the flock. It was away from the flock. And I think that's the majority of the unsaved is that, you know, they've been alienated. But we have alienated them to a point of... Christian, 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 Christian. This is how you have to be. This is how you have to look. This is how you have to do this. You know, it was funny. As I'm in the army, and they do that same thing in the army. You have to be like this, this, and this. And that's not the case. You know, you just have to be the best version of yourself and the best disciplined version. And I think that when we talk to the saved or the un when we talk to the unsaved about Christ, we should talk. We should talk in a way that's respectful. Uh, we should talk in a way that's not a deterrent. We should talk in a way that's not um, blowing them out of the water with, with nonsense. We should talk in a way that benefits or invites people to come to us. And I think that's that's the way majority of uh, Christians should approach the non or uh, the un unbelieving or the un the unholy, whatever they call them. <laughs> okay. Um, you don't chive the sheep. You don't yell at the sheep. You you bring them into the flock. You invite them back. You put your hands on them and, and rejoice. And that's the biggest thing is uh, to rejoice with the flock. So we go back and we look at this passage and we say, hey, look, God loves us all, even the loss. And we say, hey, now that the tax collectors and the sinners were drawing near to him, the Pharisees and scribes grumble, hey, this man hangs out with sinners and blah, blah, blah. Look, I don't care who I hang out with. I am becoming you. I am dying on the cross for you so you can get to Christ. And this is essentially what we need to get back to. We need to get back to the basics of Christianity, of uh, basics of loving people, basics of love and teaching at the same time. Those things are going to benefit everyone. Uh, those things are going to, uh, across the board, invite people to Christ. You want people to get excited for God. You don't want people to get um, this demonstrative, I have to be like X, Y, and Z. Now, we could talk about, hey, you know, 
the, the gay stuff, and we can talk about the this, the that, the third. Um, we could talk about all that, but I want to focus on the fact that we don't have to hate those people. We have to we have to let just God hate the sin because we're saved by grace. We're saved through grace, by grace, and that's what we need to preach. That's what we need to, you know, in conclusion, function with. Um, I'm Lamar Horton. If you agree with this message, let me know. Leave a comment below. Um, this is this is my presentation. I uh, appreciate you all for joining. Uh, my 10 minutes of spiritual word. Uh, shout out to Mr. Bile, a uh, great teacher. I appreciate all the help. Been very supportive on this deployment. Um, I appreciate you, you know, um, just being so supportive, writing back emails, uh, helping me out with assignments and reopening stuff if I missed it. You know, you've been great. So it's been a very successful semester for a lot of people in this class. 